Welcome to Eventful Endeavors, secrets to crafting the perfect celebration. If you're planning an event and looking for useful tips from industry experts, you're in the right place. So get ready to take some notes and we'll dive right in. This is Eventful Endeavors. All right, welcome back to another episode of Eventful Endeavors. Today we are back talking wedding planning. Today we're with Heather Arena of Three Sisters Events Planning. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. This is fun. Yeah. So first thing I want to ask, we always start off that in the same way, which is how you got into this industry. And also with you, it's going to be simultaneous because you are not just Three Sisters isn't a clever name. There are actually Three Sisters. So tell us the story of kind of how you guys got started, what all your roles is, and just give us that little bit of background. Definitely. Yeah, so we really like to say that we tripped and fell into wedding planning. Um, it wasn't naturally, I think, what we all thought we would be doing. Um, I actually studied music, and I was in sales of skincare and cosmetics before I started this. I was also a music teacher for seven years. So just like a lot of different jobs, sure. but all kind of service, uh, performative, like being in front of people, um, customer service, that kind of like vibe. So that felt really like a natural bend to head towards wedding planning. My sister, Brittany, who's the second sister, is our administrator. And she actually has a degree in communications with an emphasis in PR for, for like event planning. So she actually okay. studied a lot about like public relations, event planning. We've all, again, we all grew up working in the service industry. So busing tables, coffee shops, things like that. Totally. That's where we all got our start. <laughs> me, me too. Yeah. And then my sister Courtney was a full-time Vaughn's supermarket florist. So she kind of like learned everything about the skill of floristry at Vaughn's, but for very, I think, obvious reasons, like didn't want to stay there forever. And so it was like, okay, how do I, kind yeah. of, how do I take this experience and kind of move forward with it? And again, we all just kind of like, at one point, we had been asked to help some friends with wedding planning. We had planned my wedding, we had planned my sister Courtney's wedding. And it was like, okay, so do we do something with this? Or do we just say like, this was a fun experience and move on? Um. And I was the one, of course, I'm as the oldest, I'm always like leading the charge. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I was like, let's, let's do this as a business. Let's just like quickly make some business cards. Let's just like see if we can get like 10 weddings over like a year and let's just see what happens. And so I was still working my other job, um, selling skincare and cosmetics as I was like building this business. And, um, we did 10 weddings. And after that, I was hooked. I was like, I'm doing this forever. I love it so much. Yeah. Sisters weren't quite ready to leave their jobs. So I kind of took on the helm of like, I'm going to make this happen. And now um, both of them are way more involved than they were before. So cool. So when you guys do this, are you like, show, tell me how it works. So obviously, I'm guessing Courtney is involved in the florals for the wedding. And then are you kind of the on site planner? And then Brittany's kind of just managing the overall structure and like doing all the like uh, administrative stuff? It's kind of like that. Yeah. So I, I own the company. So I do all of okay. the marketing, all of the booking, all of the training of the teams. Um, You're the oldest. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> yeah. And I do this full time. Like this is my full time job. Sure. It's the only thing that I do. So yeah, I was able to kind of like flesh out other things so that I could focus on this. Um, my sister, Brittany, actually lives in Vegas, so we don't get to see her all the time, um, but okay. she is our administrator, so she does all of our contracts, and she's our timeline liaison, so anyone who's ever worked a wedding with us and has complimented us on how great our timelines are, that's because of my sister, Brittany. That's Brittany. She's cool. the timeline queen, um, and I like to think of her as, like, our chief communications officer. Like, she just is so good with words. She's helped me write you know articles that are go you know going for marketing right um and she's in a marketing position at her full-time job in vegas so she's like that's her thing courtney is obviously our florist so we we encourage our clients to hire her 
um, as kind of like an adjacent part of our business. Yeah. Um, two separate contracts for very, again, obvious reasons, but sure, sure, part sure. of a team. Um, and then she's also one of our lead coordinators. So she'll lead weddings as well when she's not doing flowers. Um, and then we have five other leads and we have a total of 16 employees. Wow. Yeah. How long has it been since you started this? Eight and a half years. Eight and a half years. Wow, that's pretty, that's, that's good growth for eight and a half years. That's awesome. It's good. It feels good. To, like, I, th I think we're finally in a place where we all kind of have seen the fruits of our labor and it's kind of starting sure. to come into fruition and we're feeling really good about where we're at. So, so you started with 10 weddings that first year or whatever. Like how many you guys doing now? What's your year look like? Last year we did 85. Whoa. Wow. That's a lot of weddings. Yeah. I don't want to do that many this year. I think we're closer to like seven sure. this year. Yeah. Are you going to try to cap yourself? Be like, all right, I need, to, I need to learn to say no sometimes. Yeah. I think the other thing that's important too, when it comes to wedding planning, um, and especially in this industry, I really feel like it's vitally important that clients hear we're not the best planner for every client. And sure. every client is not the best client for us. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of like, kind of, again, this, this interview, like fleshing out, like, is this going to be a good fit? And if it's not, it's okay. Like there's no hard feelings. It's just, we want you to go yeah. find the best team of vendors for you and what that looks 100%. like. Um, and again, we really, really pride ourselves on like service, um, just like compassion and caring for people really well. That's like a huge part right. of our culture is we say when you're a three sisters bride, you're family forever. Um, grooms too, you know, can't forget those. Grooms. Sure. Yeah, of course <laughs> we're, we're here. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, and being LGBTQ affirming, you know, for yeah. us, that's really important. Like everyone deserves to have the wedding that they imagined. Um, Great. regardless of gender, sexuality, any of that. So that's really yeah. vitally important to us too. And the way we treat people in our business is important. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that goes back into like, do we cap our business? I mean, we have to, in order to give people the quality of service that we're hoping for. Right. Right. So, I mean, with that many weddings too, so you have a pretty large team. So you're oftentimes probably doing more than one on a given Saturday night, you know? That's exactly probably, right. I mean, what's the, what's the most you've done on one day? Three. Three? Three is kind of a thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, that's, three yeah. Weddings. <laughs> three sisters, three weddings. That's what we got going on. I love it. And I'm glad you said that because I always feel like when I talk to brides and grooms too, like, you know, I always feel like I'm auditioning them too. Like, you know, if we're not, you know, I'm not going to bullshit you. If I don't oh. think this is going to work, then... If it's not for you, like, I'm not going to lie to you. I'll, I'll give you, like, there are sometimes people tell me their wedding and they ask about, like, us doing the dueling pianos. And after the conversation, if it doesn't make sense, I'm like, cool. You want a DJ? I got DJ friends. Like, you know, yeah. I'll help you out. Like, you know, I'm not going to, I want everybody to get what they want. Yeah. And I think the industry has a lot of, needs a lot of that where it's like, you know, understanding your vendors actually do care. They don't want you to have a bad day just so they can make a buck, you know. Yeah. So I, I, like to say, I like to say it like this. There are so many people in this industry, right? Like, yeah, it, there's a so lot. many wonderful vendors, wonderful vendors, but just like anywhere in the world, there's shitty people too. Sure. I don't think I'm a shitty person, but I also know I'm like, I have a capacity and a threshold of like the kind of services I can offer and the way my team works. And it's just not going to be right for everyone. So I like to say, right. if you're on a call with a vendor and you're totally vibing with them and you feel good about it, they're probably vibing with you too. Like they probably feel good yeah. about the potential experience of working with you. But if something doesn't quite click or feel right, honestly, probably the vendor is feeling the same way on the other side of the phone. And so like, it's okay to just say, Hey, this yeah. is not for us. We're moving in a different direction. And I wish that more people would feel confident to do that instead of just ghosting vendors that they reached out to. Because I think it's so yeah, much nicer. That, that's a like, lot. Yeah. Hey, I went in a different direction. Yeah. Then I don't have to waste my time with the follow-ups. <laughs> just tell me like, I, I'm not going to be butthurt about it. Like it's fine. Totally. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 
I love it. Um, all right. So let's talk, to, uh, some specifics about weddings. So, uh, what's one piece of advice you would kind of give, uh, a newly engaged couple who's just starting their wedding planning journey? Hmm. Early on kind of advice, like, yeah. you know, mm, step number one. one, hire a wedding planner. Yes. Like just do it. Find the money somewhere. Do it because it, I look at it like this. Your wedding planner is like your new best friend that you put in your pocket and you take with you everywhere you go when you're making wedding planning decisions. Like, yeah, they have great experience. They have good advice. They know what is the high end of the industry. What's the low end of the industry. Um, they're going to help you stick to your budget. Like there's just so many stressful things that happen for a bride and groom in the planning process that if they start with a planner, a lot of those stressful things like go away very quickly or don't even come up because your planner is like protecting you from those things. Um, yeah. That's number one, I would say. Number two, really like enjoy the process of being engaged. Like it feels very much like in limbo, like you're in limbo, like you're not boyfriend and girlfriend anymore, but like you're not husband and wife or sure. wife and wife groom and groom, husband and husband. Groom and right? groom. I want to use as much inclusive, uh, of course, of course. Yeah. Conversation as I can, but like it, you're in limbo, but you should relish this time that you're in together because you'll never get it back. There will never be another yeah. time where you're in this period. And some of my suggestions are like, start some wedding playlists that are collaborative between you and your partner. Um, where you drop songs into the playlists and like, as you're cooking dinner together, like turn on the first dance playlist and like, see if any of these songs that you're dancing to in your kitchen while you're making dinner together, like, do they feel like the song you'd want right. to have your first dance to at your wedding? Um, and I think like just finding these things where you can like do real life together, but also be doing some wedding planning at the same time is really, it's vital. Cause you're like getting shit done but you're also like spending time together, which you're not yeah. going to marry this person if you don't want to spend time with them. So like continuing to foster that relationship. Cause I know some couples like they get to us and they're so at the end of their rope with wedding planning. Distressed. It's like, yeah. why didn't you call me earlier? Cause I could have helped you like de-stress some of that. So I think those, that's like my yeah. big advice. I, I love that you said, I mean, I loved planning my wedding. It was some of the best years we had, I mean, and like you said, coming up with the playlist and being like, just listening to songs, like, oh, we got to put that song at cocktail hour. We got to do this. Like, totally. you know, just finding a way to make it us. And then when it happened, just being like, we did this, you know, we did this. Yeah. And I also love, you know, obviously hiring a wedding planner should be a, an early thing. And I almost notoriously, when I got married, I wasn't quite in the industry yet. So I was like, I don't need a wedding planner. I was one of those grooms. Uh, who quickly learned I was wrong and we did end up obviously getting one. But, um, you know, I always say like, they'll, it, no matter what the cost of the wedding planning is, is I truly believe it will save you money. Yeah. You know, yeah. I got, we got our caterer canceled on us last minute and it was a caterer we found on our own before we had a wedding planner and there goes that deposit. You know what I mean? Like it, it's one of those things where it's like, um, you know, it's like a financial advisor, you know, they're there to help you get the best bang for your buck. You know, totally. they might take a percentage of it, but they're going to get you, you know, those deals. Like, you know, I've got wedding planner friends that then they, when they reach out to me, they oftentimes will get a different price than like what I'll just send people who reach out directly. Oh you yeah. You know, because, oh, you, you refer me like 10 times a year. Yeah. I got, you got, yeah. you, you, I got you. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So. And just working with vendors that your wedding planner already knows, chances are A, yes. they're going to show up. They're going to do a kick-ass job. You're going to get a deal usually, you know, there's the part of that. Yeah. And and the, the vendor team, when it works, it works. It's the best. I mean, you, when you're working with yeah. people that are just good at their jobs and they're, they're good communicators and they're good collaborators, that's going to be the best experience for your wedding day. Um, yep. And we hear that more often than not, that clients come back to us and go like, man, killer vendor team, like so great. And that's, I yep. love that. It's like best compliment. Yeah. When your vendors are all friends, it just shows everything works really well. Yeah. And those are the fun that weddings for us to work to when I know everybody. And yeah. I'm just like, oh, this is, this is easy. This is going to be an easy one. So, yeah. um, 
Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. Um, so let me ask you this: uh, in since you've started doing weddings to now, what are some uh, you know changes in wedding trends that you've noticed? Either things that maybe used to happen a lot and now you don't see, or things that nobody ever used to do and now they're doing all the time. And I know like TikTok and Instagram has made this a whole thing. So uh, is there anything you're noticing happening a lot or not happening a lot? Yeah. Uh, I would say, you know, one of the things that I think used to be really popular that's not popular anymore is um, we we used to get a lot of people doing like bouquet toss and um, garter belts. And garter, yeah. they just don't, we don't really see that happening very often anymore. I think it's kind of an antiquated ritual. Um, yeah. So that's kind of a big one. And I would say, a lot of times it's the decor that changes a lot. So from when we started our business eight and a half years ago, what was in was very like ranch style, rustic, like Western burlap and lace and pearls kind of weddings. Mm-hmm. And now, and then we went through to this like really kind of crazy boho, bohemian, like pompous grass kind of time. Um, and now I think we're kind of, in more of like a modern kind of classic traditional wedding style, which is a lot of like white and green and black and ivory and just keeping it like very traditional and classic. I think that's really in right now. Um, But that's part of the fun of what I love about the job is that like every client is different. Um, Even if they have similar like decor or similar ideas, it always kind of comes out in a different direction because of their different personalities. So it's fun. It's fun to see like all of the similarities and differences as we work with clients. Yeah. And a lot of those older traditions I do notice are kind of leaving like the bouquet and garter toss. I hardly ever see anymore. And you know, I didn't even know this, like, you know, like the, the garter toss used to be the whole thing where like whoever caught the garter had to then put the garter on whoever got the bouquet. Like that's gross. That's gross. They don't think, like so so gross. Like yeah. and that was a thing for years. Like probably up until like even like the you know early two thousands. And it's like I've ne- I have never seen that since I've no. been in the industry. But that was a thing. And I know. thank God that's gone because I got ugh. married ten years ago and I was looking well, ten years in October. It'll sure. we'll be married. And um I was looking back at photos recently and it's just so funny, like some of the stuff that we did because ten years ago it was yeah. like what was popular, it was what was in. That was in. Yeah. yeah. So Yeah, it's always it's always interesting to see this stuff. I'm also noticing and maybe I don't know if you are, like a lot less people are doing bridal parties. Uh are yeah. you seeing I'm seeing a lot of just like yeah. I didn't do one. And I'm noticing a lot of people are just no, it's just us. We don't want to pick our favorites. I don't need <laughs> I talked to a bride yesterday, he was like I'm good. I don't need eight girls standing next to me. I just do this. I was like, yeah. Okay. I, I think cool. I think some of it is exactly what you're saying. Like they don't want to choose their favorite friends and then have anybody's feelings get hurt. Um, but also, like sometimes you have so many people that you love and care about, you just want yeah. them to all come and party and have a good time. Um, yeah. Or, or you have like a few besties, but you're like, I don't want to make them spend the extra money to like buy a dress and show up early and be yeah. at the party and do the thing. And so I think there's so many good reasons why to not do it. But also as a person who is like an extroverted extrovert, I mean, I had yeah. seven bridesmaids and I easily could have had 10. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You were like, I've got a lot of friends. I load them up. Yeah. 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 And it's true because they all, they do have to spend money. They have to buy their dress. They have to do all this stuff. And I think the bride I talked to yesterday was also like, I've been a bridesmaid 10 times. And she was like, I'm not doing that to any of my friends. Totally. (laughs) I I totally get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a thing I'm noticing, which is great as the guy who has to MC because if it's just the two of them, I I love it. I think weddings are getting a little bit easier in some capacities. Yeah. 17 names. And you're like, I don't even know how to say half of these people's names. Oh yeah, yeah, that's it's a lot. We I always go up to them. I'm like, "You guys cool with just first names? Yeah, you good? <laughs> yeah, we don't need to do first and last, right? Let's yeah. let's keep it cash. Way easier. You know? Yeah, yeah. We also like to make sure that our clients really hear from us. Like, we fully believe in in kind of the industry and like in the in society where we are now. 
there's no right or wrong way to do a wedding. It, it's it's only ever what's most authentic to the bride and groom and their families. And one of the things we started doing, um, I don't know if it's because I'm a feminist or just because, you know, I wanted to try to be as neutral as possible for everybody. But sure. we don't do the whole like handing off of the bride from her father to the groom anymore. Like, yeah, yeah. We, we, we will do it if they ask us to, but we found like a really kind of fun, neutral, almost kind of like non-traditional, traditional way of doing it. We, we have the, the bride and whoever she's walking down with, you know, father, grandpa, brother, whoever, we have them walk down the aisle and she actually walks on the opposite side of where she's going to go stand. Right. So if she's going to stand here. Okay. She walks on this side, which which because of how we we set up the families we actually started setting up like the bride's families on this side but she's standing on this side so that they can actually see her face across the sure right? instead of being on the same side as her because then they see the back of her head the whole time right so because of where we yeah. have the family sit seated when the bride and her whoever's walking her down come comes up she's standing right next to her mom or her mother figure so she's going to hug her mom while her groom comes up and hugs dad or gives him a high five or shakes hands or whatever, whatever's authentic to their relationship. Fist bump. Fist bump. <laughs> yeah. And then they switch. He goes and hugs the bride's mother or mother figure. Yep. And she gives one more hug to her dad, brother, grandpa, uncle, whoever's walking her down. True. And then where they end up is now he's on the side to take her hand and walk her straight forward. And she hands off her bouquet to the maid of honor or wh whoever's standing there. And then they're right in their position to like start the ceremony. So it's, it's really great for photos. It's really good for like, it's not awkward. It feels like I'm just, I'm, I'm yeah. hugging these people that I love already. The groom is being welcomed into their family or partner, you know, partners being welcomed into their family. And then they walk up yeah. together. And then it's also, yeah. And then it's not like, hey, this woman was your property. Now she's your property. It's like, no, let's just so not weird. do that. It's so God. weird. It, it's, yeah. such a, like, it's such an uh, old, I mean, again, this. I'm either like, this because I'm a feminist or because I'm just trying to be like yeah. chill with everybody. <laughs> yeah, it is outdated. And we even like, my, my wife was like, we're not doing that. Nobody owns me. I was like, yes, right. Yeah. You know? My father so, is really, yeah. really traditional. So we did that. Sure. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I think it's all about like finding new ways to meet as many people's needs as possible in the industry and just kind of going with the flow. If someone's like, oh, I don't like that. It doesn't feel good because I have weird stuff with my family. Can we do something else? It's like, yes, of course. Yeah. That feels good, you know? So. Yeah, there's no, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, but that being said, um, what are, uh, some of the things that you think you should never do at a wedding? <laughs> Cause I'm, or, uh, let me rephrase it. What's the cringiest thing you've ever seen done at a wedding? Um, where you're just like, Oh, this is awkward. This was maybe not the best idea. Gosh, that's so hard. Um, cringiest thing I ever saw at a wedding. Well, some people just don't have good style. They, okay. just, they just don't. So they're like, I want sure. these colors and these colors with these colors. And we're like, wait, really? <laughs> like, we're, we almost think we're being punked because it's so bad. Right. You're like, you shouldn't do this. Um, needless yeah. to say, none of those weddings are like on our Instagram or gallery. <laughs> sure. So they, but you give it, I mean, they want it. So you're like, we're going to do it, you know. Oh, 100%. Like, I'll give any client what they want. Um, obviously there's right. times where I try to like lean them away from stuff where I feel like this is not a good idea. Let's not do this. Um, I mean, honestly, I think we try really hard to make our clients feel like they're seen, you know? Um, sure. I do think that some, this doesn't happen very often, but I do, I do think like that some people think that their wedding is an opportunity for them to like entertain everybody so we've done weddings where like they're playing games on the dance floor which to me feels very like high school party or like you know bar mitzvah right. like it feels like a it feels like a birthday party not like a wedding so sure. those are some of the things that i think like i find them a little bit cringy because i just don't i don't i'm like it's not your job to entertain not your everybody. thing 
Yeah. You know, um, we had a wedding where they did karaoke. How was that? People have asked me about that because we do the dueling pianos and people have asked like, can you do library band karaoke? And I'm always like, we can, but I want you to understand you're giving a mic to anybody who wants it at your wedding. Yep. Yep. So how, how was the karaoke? <laughs> Actually, the reason why they did it is because like the groom and a couple of his really close friends and family members were really good singers. So okay, cool. It was actually cool. I actually got up and like sang a song at the wedding. I was gonna ask, yeah, because um, we're gonna get into that too. Because I know you're yeah. into music, but 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 I wouldn't. I to be honest, I wouldn't do karaoke at your wedding. Like I just think I just think that's like maybe at the after party. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I did one where we did karaoke, and I said I have a plan. If we're gonna do karaoke, get the songs ahead of time, get the list of people ahead of time. Don't put it in, you know. The Their stratosphere, head. you know, just yeah. like you would the speeches, you know, you don't give, you, and I'm sure you'd agree, you don't do open speeches. Anybody who holds a microphone at your wedding, it needs to be planned because you know, weird Uncle Al is coming out and something's going to make it really cringy and awkward. And so I don't plan do things it. things that I can't control at a wedding. Like, I yes. do not like that at all. Like, no. I am in control of this no. wedding. If something is out of my control, I start to get a little like, how can I reel this back in? Um, yeah. Yeah. And people try every wedding. I do every wedding without fail. Somebody will come up to me as the guy who, as the holder of the microphone and they'll say something like, Oh, can I do this? Can I do this? Or they'll ask for a song that's on the bride's do not playlist or whatever it might be. And I'm like, if you get the bride to come up here and tell me it's okay, we'll do it. And then they disappear into the abyss and I never see them again because they know that's not going to happen. Right. You know, that's exactly right. Yeah. So, no, yeah. I'm gonna ask. I mean, if you want to ask me about horror stories at weddings. Yeah. What I want to hear a horror story. Well, I I got punched at a wedding. What? Yeah. So Oh, okay. I need to I need to know what happened here. So we're at this really nice hotel resort in my area. Um okay. and I mean it's 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 like it's definitely like resort, right? So but I think at the time, this was maybe four years ago. Um, I think at the time it was, there wasn't a great like um, security coming from the beach. Cause it's like the hotel literally lines up to the beach. So okay. I'm standing inside the ballroom. I'm waiting for the, um, the bride and her father to finish their father daughter dance. And it's just as the mother son dance is starting. And I'm like standing over in a corner of the room, like looking at the dance floor, right behind me. All of a sudden I feel this like energy come up behind me. It's my sister. She's working the wedding with me and I immediately can like feel her stress. And I'm like, turn right. around. I'm like, are you okay? She's like, there is a woman in the bathroom who is seriously on one. Like she is, high as a kite and she's trying oh, like to get just came in from the beach or something yeah so i don't think she was like homeless i honestly think she was just she was on a trip um because she had like a really nice bathing suit on and jeans but she was like soaking wet like she had literally just come out of the ocean put her jeans on come into the hotel to use the bathroom she's talking crazy talk like my husband's in there he's marrying someone else like and, and she was just, yeah, crazy. So I kind of come out of the ballroom into the hallway where she is. And as I come out of the ballroom door, she is like right here. She's in my space. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to put my hands on her. I want to be like very conscious of like the situation. So I just kind of like took a step forward and closed the ballroom door behind me so that we're literally like she had to take a step back. And I'm talking to her. I'm, there's no reasoning with her because she's on drugs. She's out there, yeah. She's just totally out there. And I'm like, I, feel, <clears throat> I need you to leave. I'm so sorry. This is a private party. Like, I need you to leave. So she looks, she kind of goes as if she's going to head for the outside door and comes around me and opens up the ballroom door. So there's a table of people that's right in front of those ballroom doors. All they see is me, like grabbing her around the middle and like yanking her back to the door 
And as I'm yanking her back out the door, she swings around and punches me. Oh man! And I mean, it was like it wasn't hard. She was she was clearly just like get off of me. Um, but the the girls who were at this table, their boyfriends were all like bouncers at bars. And so stuff. they saw it, and they were like, "We're up!" Like let's... they all literally like it was like a timed dance. All three of them get up, <laughs> come out in the hallway. They like pull her off of me by her hair, and of course, then oh my, my brain God. is like, "Okay." I don't want anybody getting arrested or injured. <laughs> like, I'm still working somebody's wedding. Like, let's totally. make this. I'm, this I'm we like, don't want the bride and groom to know this is happening. Like, not at all. So get I'm her like, out of here. We don't want. Yelling down the hallway. I'm like, call nine one one. Like, get the police. It was just a. It was a. It was a bad situation from the beginning. Just because I think the security <sighs> was a little low for that venue. Sure. Um, the next two times I worked there, I hired my own security. <laughs> Smart. Smart. But that was like that's that wild. Was the craziest thing that's ever happened to me at a wedding. Yeah, that is pretty wild. So, um, well, listen, we're coming close to the end of time, but I do want to talk uh, quickly about. Uh, so, you came from music. So, tell me about just really quickly about like your background music. Like, were you did you play? Were you just singing? Uh, what um, what's kind of your musical history? I'm curious. Yeah, so I started doing musical theater and like singing in choirs and at church, like from the sure. time I was. I don't know, five six years old I was in my first musical at my school when I was in first grade I had my very first solo on stage um yeah. and then just that that like love of music and performance grew for me um and I I was an extra in some movies I mean I just I wanted to do yeah. everything when I went to college um I studied musical theater so my degree is in music and theater and I'm a classically trained vocalist. Um, cool. When I got out of college, though, I really like, I went into teaching music and there were a lot of reasons why personally in my life, I didn't go pursue theater. And so I had a friend who said, you know, you really should learn how to play an instrument. Um, guitar is pretty easy. Like you should learn how to play guitar. So a couple of my friends bought me a guitar, like as a gift and started teaching me how to play. And um, I wrote a whole bunch of music. It was like for the first time in my nice. life, it just kind of like came out. So of much me. fun. So yeah. much fun. And uh, and then I, I recorded an album like about 10, 11 years ago. Um, awesome. Yeah. And I've just been like singing and performing ever since. Um, I, I sing at weddings sometimes. Like I always offer it as an option mm. to my clients. 99% of them don't take me up on it, which is fine. Sure. Um, but it's just kind of fun to know. Like, to know. Um, yeah. And it's, it's interesting because, you know, I've lived in this area of Ventura County for 27 years. And the first half of those like 27 years, I was like Heather, the singer, Heather, the performer. Now it's fun right. to see, like, I'm Heather, the wedding planner. And like, most right. people don't know that I even sing. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. I love it. Uh, last thing, because I'm just curious, because I'm also a musical theater nerd at heart. Yes. Um, what's your, what, what would you say your favorite musical is? I knew you were going to ask me that. You knew? I'm just curious, because sometimes it's the same as mine, because I know mine, if anybody ever asks. Like, I mean, it changes probably every couple of years, but I know what my top it, three is. I think I know what my number one is. So I think that this is a hard question, because I have classical sure. musical theater shows that are like my faves, and then like okay. more contemporary, and even like more modern. So yeah. classical favorite Broadway musical forever and ever and ever has been Carousel. Carousel. Okay. Um, Rogers and Hammerstein. The story is, yep. it's great. The story is like horrible, but the music is so beautiful. Yeah. Um, and then I would say like more contemporary, anything by Jason Robert Brown. He did. Um, last five years. Last that five was years. one of mine. One of mine. Yeah. yeah Not my years. favorite, but it's in my top three. Uh, Parade, Songs for a New World. Like, Songs for a New World. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, yep. And then I would say like modern. It's got to be between Hamilton and um, Hades Town. Yeah, Hamilton's incredible, and Hades Town is also really good. My favorite's always been Into the Woods. I've always been an Into the Woods guy. It's okay, just, I don't know okay. why. I love Into the Woods. Sondheim I think it's so is, cool. Sondheim is hard, yeah. man. I auditioned for it's one, wild. Of, one of the um, yeah. colleges, one of the universities I wanted to go to in New York. I auditioned for their program with um, 
uh, a song from Into the Woods. It was Little Red Riding Hood's song. Yeah, it's uh, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I could talk musical theater all day, and we're already over over our time. But I just I've been having so much fun talking to you, so we went well, along. Thanks, Sean. Um, so, is there anything else before we wrap it up? Anything else you want to say about the business? Obviously, we'll link to your social medias, all that stuff, so people know where to find you. But is there anything else you kind of wanted to mention before we uh, call it quits? No, just you know, we're excited to to hear from anybody that wants information about what we do. Um, we're pretty much booked for 2024. We maybe have one or sure. two more dates, um, but we're fully, you know, into 2025 booking. So yeah, yeah, great. Well, yeah, we'll uh, we'll make sure people know where to find you. Um, and then, yeah, this has been great. Thank you so much for doing this. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. I know you're going on a little vacation this weekend, so enjoy your time off. Thank you. And um, you know, I'm glad to hear everything's going so well with uh, with the company and the business and everything. Thank you. Thanks so much, Sean. Look forward to seeing you, you again. No problem. You have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of Eventful Endeavors, Secrets to Crafting the Perfect Celebration. We hope to have left you with some actionable ideas for your own event. If you like the show, please subscribe and definitely leave us a review. We read every comment. So until next time, happy planning and see you soon on Eventful Endeavors.